Hi, this is guitarist Dennis Tafe, and I'm in my home studio, and I want to welcome you to the making of my 348th album, which is entitled Modern Rock Guitar, Volume 348, Infinite Distance. Okay, now, um, this particular album, uh, I guess before I, we get to the album, I, I should tell you, um, basically, my approach to music and creating music, in fact. Um, of course, I'm a guitar player, and um, all of my music is improvised on the spot. Um, so, what you hear on the album is actually what you'd hear as if you were in my studio room. Um, and I just record two tracks, left and right in stereo. And I use loops done on the fly, which is where you, you know, you play guitar, and as you play guitar, you can record parts of it and have it start looping and then playing over that. So I come up with a lot of ideas that way. I also emulate bass on guitar. Right, so basically I'm playing guitar and by basically lowering it an octave um, it can make it sound like a bass. Okay, and sometimes I use drum machines as well, but not on this album. Um, I also use a guitar synthesizer type sounds, you know. Um, and I think I do on this album as well. Okay, um... Now, to put this album in context, um, compared to prior albums, um, I was really on a, a quest, um, basically using um, tube amps, right? Such as a Fender Deluxe Reverb and a, um, a Supro. Right, um, dual Saturn reverb, little 15 watt um, tube amp, as well as a Fender Super Champ X2s. Um, and in fact, for this album, um, besides a couple of tracks, I think most of it was done on Black Star HT Club 40s, which are kind of a tube amp, but it's kind of a hybrid tube amp. Um, now, uh, let's get to the um, album cover first, um, which wasn't entirely created by me. Um, this was a, a public domain image. So someone had created this ocean and a boat there, and so um, basically I added, of course, the text. Um, a guitar in the air <laughs> and along the sides of the boat as if they were oars and then just a, a you know put in a little picture of me on the boat playing guitar okay and it's called infinite distance and part of the reasoning for the title you know one I thought it fit the cover nicely um, but also, I was kind of feeling this kind of, um, you know, because at the time, you know, because of the COVID virus and things, and there were lockdowns and, you know, um, isolation, basically, you know. So, um, I very much felt that way. And you'll notice, you know, there's only one boat there in an ocean of nothing. You know, there's nothing really else there. Uh, and that's part of it, is this kind of isolation. I, uh, I was certainly feeling because of the, you know, what was going on with the virus and things, you know. Um, and this uh, social distancing, which, you know, really should be called anti-social distancing. But that's beside the point. Anyway, so that was kind of my mind thought, I guess, if you like. Uh, there and and the fact that also, um, as I again I said, I was very much into the 
real clean uh, guitar tube amp kind of sound. Um, and and so hopefully this comes through in some of the tracks um, to put together the album. You know, there's this kind of a uh, distance, you know, in the tracks or isolation, a feeling of isolation. Um, so we'll go through the tracks here and I'll try to recollect exactly what I was doing, what I was thinking then. Um, and there are seven tracks, you know, so this is uh, volume 348. Uh, we'll go through it here, uh, track by track, and I'll try to give you some insight as to how it came about and that kind of thing. Um, and in this series, I'm running a little bit behind because I also have to do a 349 and 350 and just submit 351. So, trying to get caught up here. Um, so this was recorded really a, um, a little bit, a while ago, uh, I guess during the summer, you know, of 2020. Um, okay, so let's take a listen to some of this. Um, I won't do the whole track, but enough to give you an idea anyway. Um, so this first track is a rather long track, and it's called Infinite Distance. And it's uh, 10 minutes and 52 seconds. And I think the first thing you'll notice here is the guitar tone. It's very much this kind of tube sound. Okay. And this is just running through the camera microphone. You know, so it's not direct sound. Okay, so there, uh, I've got the clean guitar tube amp sound there, real clean, right? And I've looped that and then added a bass line to it. And they're adding some, a second guitar part over the guitar loops, which are kind of filled. there that's still the clean guitar but it's a swell sound which I use quite often is where you hit a note and then with a pick and then turn up the volume so you don't hear the pick noise it gives it kind of a keyboardy type sound a pattern. I do a lot of pattern playing where I play patterns, then with a delay and loop them and then kind of stack different patterns together. And here it's quite subtle, but you'll hear it if you listen for it. So we'll fast forward here. Here's a five minute fifty three mark. Okay, now 
there's a new pattern stacked on top of the old one. Right. Guitar pattern. That's through a delay as well. The trick with doing this kind of thing, especially when you're improvising and using a lot of loops, is to give the appearance of, of space between the loops so it doesn't get too clustered up, you know, which is easy to do when you're looping. Okay, now right there, right there, I've taken a layer and actually reverse the loop so it's actually playing part of it is playing backwards giving kind of a, a, a lead type sound you'll hear it here here it is so I didn't take all the loops and reverse them just that one the nine or wait nine ten mark okay now there's some more uh, delayed patterns delayed guitar that's the introductory track um, and I really like the mood that it creates and it really um, is album wise you know sets the mood for the album really okay now the second track um, is really shared with the last track and it's actually quite short in comparison it's only a minute and ten seconds long and it's called Museums Part 1. Okay. And Track 7 is Part 2, obviously. Okay, but here we go. Let's take a listen to that. Ah, yes. And this, I really like this track. I really like this track. And I've stopped it here, and we'll play it here again. Um, even though it's very short, I really like it because, um, in a way, it reminds me very much of some of my favorite films. And a lot of my music, you know, um, you know, you could call it contemporary, instrumental, new age, what have you. To me, it's just guitar music. But it's film music as well, you know, with films in mind. And this very much reminds me of a, a small film that I really like. Because um, the music was done by Tangerine Dream, you know. Uh, and it was called, the, for example, The Miracle Mile. And that period of film, you know, it's not, it wasn't a huge movie or anything. But that whole period of film I really enjoyed. Um, so this kind of reminded me of that. You know, just the beginning of it. And so the, obviously it's the guitar parts, the bass emulation, and then what you're hearing there is a synthesizer. Uh, guitar synthesizer sound. And that's actually coming from one of my pedals. You know, it's actually the Eventide H9. 
I think it's a hot sauce algorithm, which basically makes your guitar sound like a synthesizer. Now it has some limitations in that you can can't play chords; you can only play single notes with it. So let's take a listen to that. And I, yeah, I do very much like this track. I like the atmosphere of it that it creates, and fits very well in the overall you know, essence of the uh, album. Okay, let's take a listen to it. It's quite short. So there's a guitar part which has been looped. Reflections. So let's see what happens here. And this is another really long track, uh, 10 minutes and 17 seconds. So very much like the first track, which was 10 minutes and 52 seconds. So let's take a listen to that. Okay, now here's where you can really hear that bass emulation. Played on guitar and then lowered an octave. So it doesn't quite exactly sound like a bass, you know, but pretty darn close. And then I loop that, of course, play the guitar part, and added some harmonics. Rather than just playing them with a pick, I actually took my fingers and kind of plucked the strings. Like that. It gives you kind of a different sound. And there's, of course, the, the Jimi Hendrix style hammer on and pull off, you know. It, it, it's quite effective, really. It's real basic, but it's real effective for this kind of, of guitar track. Definitely a different kind of mood, atmosphere than we've heard previously. For some reason, it always reminds me of like if you've ever driven around a city at night or something. You know, it's like that kind of feel, or ambience. All right, let's fast forward a little bit to five minutes thirty-four second mark. got a guitar repeating pattern it's a delay but it's got a filter on it right almost kind of like a phaser type filter which is a sound I don't normally use so I wanted to try and incorporate it Also another track that I looped and then reversed, right, giving you these kind of uh, swells. They're actually chords, most of them. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you listen closely to those swells, and the inspiration for that, believe it or not, is actually, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the guitarist Michael Hedges, and the first track on his album, Aerial Boundaries. Remember Aerial Boundaries? Right? Uh, if you haven't checked out that album, you should. Uh, by Michael Hedges. And his first track, um, you know, is where he's using a harp guitar. And if you listen to that track, in fact, he used it elsewhere in the album. He very much does this kind of um, reverse, kind of usually their harmonics or something like that. You know, which gives it this swell effect. Okay. So there's my plug from Michael Hedges, who unfortunately, I guess, died in a car accident, sadly. Okay. Uh, but he really much uh, invented, or at least popularized, the, um, you know, where you're s slapping and hitting the acoustic while you're fretting and doing all those kinds of things. Really talented guy, I thought. Okay. track four and it's called Resonance um, and let me see what that is exactly I don't remember but it's seven minutes and thirty seconds long let's hear it here we go it's Rocky I the tiger okay <laughs> kind of the guitar a little bit sounds like it here we go Okay, so this is a delay guitar. There's actually um, two different ones. One is a droning loop. You know, I played and then looped it, and then added a second one. Right, you'll notice the intervals are different between the, the two tracks, and together they make this kind of sound. Obviously here I'm trying to build a uh, tension. Okay, now, what I did 
differently on this track if you listen closely. And you'll hear this thing and it's kind of constant and, and almost sounds like a synthesizer to give it some ambience, you know, um, some atmosphere. Uh, and it sounds almost like a synthesizer, but it's not. And what that is, is actually a huge reverb. And what you're hearing there is as I'm playing some of the chords and things, you'll hear these um, huge reverb trails. Kind of what's left over on a huge reverb. You know, when you play a chord, it reverberates and reverberates and reverberates. And you're hearing the those reverberations and they're kind of um, cascading one over the other so let's take a listen to that again and of course you have the delayed pattern guitar several layers of that playing different patterns They're identical to the single notes I was playing at the very beginning, you know, the thing that sounded like kind of like Rocky or whatever, you know, the Eye of the Tiger thing, you know, when you add the second guitar playing melody, they're single notes, when you put them together, right, it's, you get almost the same as the chords that then I play later. On there okay so let's move around or move along I should say and let's go to um, track five and it's called standing wave okay and it's about four minutes and 16 seconds called standing wave let's take a listen to that um, I really tried to push what I was able to do with the bass line uh, almost trying to make it sound a little bit like a fretless bass and you'll hear that at the very beginning um, so here we go so that's the main theme of the track the guitar and there's the bass right here and you hear it sliding That's the limitation of the the bass emulation. Okay, now here's a reverse guitar, and it's not a loop. Uh, rather, that sound is actually uh, playing a guitar lead, but it kind of has a reverse effect from one of the pedals. It's kind of a, a little lead line. Uh, but I didn't want to go overboard with it, so it's, it's pretty subtle, really. Here comes. 
comes, of course, the repeating patterns. I love to use those um, because the patterns are always different. Track six, and it's called Air. Okay, and it's ten minutes and three seconds. Let's listen to that. outside and it plays this music and it has the same kind of or at least similar you know delay kind of thing and it really creates a to me always reminds me of the outdoors if you like so Yeah, 
lot of these chords were kind of more advanced kind of jazz jazzy chords so soloing out over it uh, you know had its limitations for me I'm not really a jazz player at all but Improvising on a track like that, you know, um, I try to incorporate all different kinds of ideas that I can and take it as far as I can, really musically. You know. uh, okay, now there's one last track and it's Museum Part 2 and it closes out the album and of course it's an extension of um, Track 2, which was Museum Part 1. So this is Museums Part 2, and it's only 2 minutes and 28 seconds, let's hear it. And notice it's the, very close to the um, main guitar sound in track 6. baseline especially at the beginning you know so I think those are like 16th notes and they're kind of boom 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 <laughs> you know so I think that could have been done a little better but, but it works out nicely so here you get just the, the main riff really Guitar Volume 348 Infinite Distance and I, I do like this album um, it has a definite mood and atmosphere and a theme throughout all the tracks you know and um, here you know we're, we're listening to it you know parts here part there and, but when you listen to it as a whole um, it definitely creates this mood and atmosphere, uh, which is a little hard to describe. Um, definitely get a sense of isolation in a way, and it's not too cheery. You know, it's not like a super happy party album. You know, it's more of a, I wouldn't say meditative, um, you know, but definitely isolated. You know, uh, you know when you hear people say, "Oh man, sometimes I just like to be alone." Okay, well this album's kind of like that, <laughs> you know. And in fact, it would make you know when you listen to this album, just put it on in the background as you're doing other things and things. Uh, it works very well for that kind of thing. Okay. So very pleased with this album. Um, in the future, of course, we got 
two more to do and then after that we've got 351 which should be out by the time I get those two other videos done and we'll do a video on that I'm trying to do one for each album you know um, just so I can at least try to remember what the motivation was or the ideas behind this album uh, just as a side note you know like for example I get a guitar synthesizer pedal and of course then volume 350 has a bunch of synthesizer tracks okay very good um, so I'll see you next time okay